Welcome to the Regal Wheels show featuring MVT. This is your first ever truck driving recruitment show. I am your host, Camille Gaines, the CEO of Regal Wheels. And joining me, of course, is Robert Pearson. We call him Pearson. He is our favorite VP over at Missoula um, Valley. He's the VP of recruitment. So we are your ultimate destination for truck driver um, industry news, hot jobs, tips for recruiters and drivers. So let's definitely make history together. Pearson, you want to say something? Yeah, good to be on with you today from Choo Choo Town here in Tennessee. <laughs> um, lots to discuss. Excited to be on with you like I am every single week. Yes, absolutely. I'm glad we virtual today because I got cooties. I'm fighting out where I'm recovering from the flu. I don't know if I got it from the plane coming from uh, Canada or if Kayla gave it to me when I was in Mansfield, but somebody gave me the flu, okay, some kind of way. So I'm recovering from that. So I'm glad we're virtual. Do, do I need to mask up or am I safe? I think I'm okay <laughs> from this distance. Yes. And it's crazy that I catch everything because I take vitamin supplements and everything. My mother says, keep your supplements because you take everything and you forever catching something. So whatever. <laughs> but we're going to jump into some good stuff, some industry news. And I know you wanted to talk about this good old diesel going down a little bit. Yeah, diesel's down uh, approximately seven cents, seven point two cents to be exact. Uh, currently sitting at four twenty nine as a national average. Like I said, I'm cautiously optimistic, but I'll still take it. Uh, fuel going down is a good thing. Fuel uh, surcharge being a lagging, lagging indicator means we want to try and squeeze in as much freight into our week as quickly as we can do it safely and legally while still being cognizant of fuel economy. So that's at least exciting here uh, from a fuel standpoint. Um, and then a lot of the companies are starting to release their uh, financials for quarter three. Uh, you'll see between trucking companies as well as OEMs and, and some of the other manufacturers that supply our industry, everybody's down about 50% in terms of net profit or they're down 20, 30, 40% on total revenue. So it's going to be one of the things to watch here at this moment is look, your presidents, your CEOs, your leadership teams at any of the trucking companies you're at should be out and about pay hitting the pavement. So if you go into the office and you're at a company where you get to physically see your president and he's always sitting at his desk, that's not a good sign. He should be in the air. He should be boots on the ground. Uh, I can tell you that I know our CEO and uh, COO, uh, I can say we're at like four different customers last week, both current and new customers uh, beating the pavement because um, that's what you should be doing all the time. But in particular, during this time, if you're at a carrier and you don't appear to have the freight levels that you need, your president's job is to get out there with the sales team and beat the pavement here to try and pick up some customers. And so one of the things to be cognizant of when you're at a company and you don't see your presence actively engaged in the sales part of this, um, that's a cause for alarm. You should be concerned by that. Um, obviously, you don't want to micromanage somebody's day, but that's one of the things that at least should instill confidence in you is when you see your leadership team out and about with potential customers and so um yeah a lot of down revenue right now across the board uh as would be expected the companies that ran tight operations are going to be okay and those companies that weren't that cognizant of prices are now reeling um so you'll see a lot of companies in the dry van world that were paying company drivers 75 80 cents a mile um they're not doing so well at this moment right now. We had 18 different pay increases last year. 
but we are also realistic. You have to run as a profitable business. If you don't, it's bad for you and the driver. And so uh, you see a lot of companies right now being acquired or needing to be acquired or quite frankly, gonna go to scraps. And so uh, though we're going in the fourth quarter, which generally offers a reprieve, this is going to last a while here. We're thinking 2024 is going to be a recession. So you want to be at a carrier that's financially stable. So it's one of the things as you talk to your recruiter, I wouldn't hesitate to ask that question on what kind of financial stability do you have? Um, you know, if this freight stunk for the next 12 to 18 months, would you guys be able to make it? Because um, knowing where to hitch your wagon to becomes very, very important. I agree with that. In our next segment, I want to definitely dive into collaboration and teamwork because we as an industry, and I'm not just talking about transportation or supply chain logistics, talking um, our niche industry, we talk in a lot about drivers and what they're willing to do. But I'm glad that you talked about the leadership. Um, so whether it be the CEO, the COO, but also you are huge in leadership and you are always never on the ground, like ever. Like now you are in Chattanooga. You are never um, at your own house. So it's about leadership actually out there trying and making sure that you're meeting with customers, touching bases with all of your recruiting staff because you have recruiting staff in multiple locations. So making sure everybody is okay. Um, so doing a collaboration and doing what it takes to keep MVT, doing what it takes to keep Rig on Wheels profitable. So everybody putting their hands in the cookie jar and making sure we stay afloat. So that's a that's a big deal. It's not just the drivers that have to do everything. Cause I like, I, I think we spend a lot of time just focusing on what drivers have to do, but it takes all of us to run a trucking industry, not just truck drivers. It does, and in particular, I, I will tell anybody that you, you wanna see the leadership team being visible. So when things are going great, it's one thing to see your leadership team at any company, but when things are struggling and you're having to push forward and the industry's in, in a little bit of peril at this moment, you wanna see the leadership team in particular addressing the drivers. So as an example, if you go to the YouTube page for Mesilla Valley Transportation, you will literally see a 50 minute video that has Royal Jones, our CEO, has George Chastain, my boss, our COO, uh, Monica Fuller, our VP of operations and myself, physically doing a town hall, answering questions specifically that drivers sent in. Um, you wanna have that visibility right now because given the current environment, it's, it's great when your leadership team is visible when things are going well, because everyone likes to be Santa Claus, everybody wants to be a hero. You want your leadership team to be very visible when things are gonna be a sluggish uh, you know, grind for the foreseeable future. And so, um, yeah, that's one of the big things is you wanna have that relationship across the board. And as a driver in particular, you wanna have your addresses cons uh, and concerns, uh, your concerns and needs addressed by your leadership team. Um, so yeah, if, if anyone gets onto our YouTube page, definitely something to check out. That was done recently in the last month where we had about 900 different responses from drivers sent in to us. And we addressed a lot of them. We addressed all of them individually, but addressed a lot of them on a larger town hall scale. And that's something we're probably gonna do, continue to do on a quarterly basis given our, uh, our um, uh, activity from our driver base uh, pretty much encourages that they want to see that. I like that town hall questions. I like that. Got a lot of views and uh, in particular though, if you're a driver, it's nice to have leadership, quite frankly, care and, and want to address your concerns. Yeah, that's pretty good. Well, let's go to a commercial and then I do want to talk about how um, all the different positions within our agencies or companies can actually collaborate so we can like work together, be profitable and push forward. Cause 2024, according to different articles that I was sending you for you to be depressed. <laughs> Cause that's what I think is fun. Um, it, 2024 is definitely going to be, uh, uh, can be hard. Um, but like you said before the show started, 
if you made it through 2023, you'll be fine. So, yep. okay, let's take the commercial, whichever one you shall choose, then we're going to take it from there in the next segment. Okay, welcome back, everybody. Okay, so one of the depressing articles that I sent Pearson for his pleasurable reading um, was from Fox Business about expert details, the impact of great trucking recession that will have on Americans. And you all know we're leading into 2024. So, Pearson, what do you feel about that? Um. I'm going to be optimistic here. With that said, I, I do appreciate the fact that the major um, media is covering uh, the uh, industry more in particular here and, and quite frankly concerned about what happens in our industry. Uh, again, we've talked about a little bit on this podcast here is one of the nice things of the pandemic. One of the silver linings of the pandemic is we kind of got a lot more attention as supply chains got disrupted. Um, I, I would say that, uh, look, you're going to see a lot of people go by the wayside still in this industry. The clearinghouse took out about 150, 160,000 people. You have a bunch of owner operators that got into the market right at the time that the spot market was at its peak that are continuing to drop off because their business, you cannot run a dry van business at 250 a mile and think that ship's going to last forever. Um, you have a lot of companies, drivers that are just not that um, financially astute that are going to make it in this moment. But if you can make it, what ends up happening is 2025, 2026, because this is generally an 18, 18 to 24 month cycle, 2025, 2026 ends up being really good for you. Because you now run lean and you run efficiently and the revenues are going to go up and there's going to be a need for cargo and there's going to be a need for freight. Um, the key here is be financially stable. So as a truck driver, as an example, you know, the more you can operate where you take more honey, money home with you and you're not spending it at the truck stop or you're not going on a diversion and going out a route so that you can visit the world's largest ball of twine. Uh, or whatever you want to do on the road, the better off you're going to be. So uh, you're going to see a lot more stories like this. Um, I will say, though, the more efficient and lean that you can run, the better off you're going to be and a company is going to be. With that said, there will be an impact. This will take some folks off the road, and that's going to drive up costs. So the consumers may see costs go up, or there may be issues getting supplies. But if you're a professional trucker, that's, that's not a bad deal. That could be very, very fun. Be optimistic, Camille. Optimistic here. So let's think about it. What are some of the things that the recruiter can do to help? Yeah. Uh, recruiter, you know, part of my, the thing I've taken a lot of pride in since about January of 06 is I'm not looking to hire a driver. I'm trying to hire the right driver in the right job at the right time. And there is a difference. There's a difference between recruiting and capacity development. By the way, if it looks like I'm in an earthquake, I am not. I keep wobbling this table. I'll stop doing that here because I notice I start <laughs> jiggling a little bit. So if you're in the Chattanooga area, please do not be concerned. There is not an earthquake taking place. You do not have to worry about that. Sorry about that. Um, but as a recruiter, it comes into hiring the right person for the right job at the right time. Uh, it's one of the advantages that a rig on wheels has versus a, um, a recruiter at XYZ Trucking. At XYZ Trucking, I can only hire for XYZ Trucking. That's just where it is. 
part of that conversation with a rig on wheels recruiter comes into what's the best job for you? You have family needs. You have a specific area that you live in. You have X amount of experience. You have a safety background and a work history that looks like blank. And then it's finding the job that aligns with that driver's needs. I can't emphasize that enough. That's the difference between recruiting and capacity development at a carrier. Capacity development is trying to say, what do I want this fleet to look like 12 months from now? Straight up recruiting is I'm putting a guy in a seat today, a guy or a gal into a seat today. And that difference between capacity development and recruiting becomes really important right now because if I hire the wrong driver, I'm not doing them a favor and I'm not doing me a favor. I am essentially feeding into the industry turnover. If I can align all three of those points, we're going to be very successful. So as a recruiter, it's having a much more detailed conversation and understanding, hey, what do you want to do today? What do you want to do three months from now, nine months from now, 12 months from now? And having that conversation, A, I get to learn about the driver in a much more uh, personable way, which makes a big difference. And I'm probably going to be more successful at recruiting that driver in the long run. B, and most importantly, that driver is going to be with me six months, 12 months down the road, and we're still going to be coworkers. Um, that becomes really important right now. I'm a big believer that it's always important, but right now at this moment, that becomes really important. It saves the company money because I've hired the right person. I'm not having to churn and burn that same position three, four times a year trying to fill it. I definitely agree. And to spin a negative and make it into a positive, I've been thinking about how to do this. Um, one of the good things that happened with COVID is it shined a light on our industry you know, that people just weren't thinking about. You know, they just think trucking industry boring or unnecessary or all type of things that people would think. So like the mainstream media, Fox Business and everything, they pick up different key terms or taglines and, you know, want to do things with it. But certain things that did happen um, as far as the clearing house and it's clearing out all of these drivers. Of course, you get some that maybe shouldn't have been in the clearing house and casualties of war, things that happen. So I don't want to talk about those. But the majority of the 160,000 drivers that I am very glad that are no longer in our industry as a whole. Um, because I'm very serious in the fact that I want our industry and I want our drivers to have the same respect that pilots have. Yep. Especially now that we have uh, mainstream media, that's what they call it, right? Mainstream media? I think so still. I think that still applies. Okay, because I, you know I mess up terms. So mainstream media, since we have their attention right now, if we can now within the next five, 10 years, have the the regular truck driver, the professional truck driver, the operator, which eventually they're gonna be called, have the same respect as a, a pilot. Now we're in a totally different world. The, our government and everybody, we're gonna be given uh, different opportunities. Everything is going to be given a different light. Um, and I think things will just be easier. Yep. Things will be better. Some stuff isn't done because, frankly, they don't know how it works, to be yep. honest with you. When you hear them talk about trucking, they literally, they just don't know how it works. Logistics just has so many different facets um to it but every to go back to what you were saying about um you know your owners your vps and everybody everybody has to do their job literally in order for everything to sustain especially during 2024 so we can have a glorious 25 and 26. some yep. people will be like oh that's so far off but really the people that feel like they're so far off is because trucking is really not for them because if you eat and breathe this industry you know 25 and 26 is tomorrow it's literally um tomorrow because we've already start forecasting and see ourselves already at the end of um 2024 yep. so 
What are some of the things and some of the trainings that you have been doing or plan on doing with MVT recruiters to help them during this transition? Because it is a tough transition right now. Yeah, we 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 review. We have ongoing training on a continuous basis. We review phone calls. So when you call us and you get that little message, your call may be recall uh, may be recorded for training purposes. It is literally being recorded for training purposes. We we go over those calls. We want to know, hey, what we get right, what we get wrong. Uh, we listen to those calls from a standpoint of the drivers trying to tell you something and you didn't give them a chance. Truth be told, a good recruiter only does thirty percent of the talking. 70% of the talking is done by the driver because the driver is the one that holds the answers to everything. The driver is the person that ultimately knows what it is that they want. So if it feels like your recruiter is trying to get you to share more and spill the beans, they, they literally are. Because at the end of the day, I can give you a bunch of information and I can throw figures and stats at you. But you hold the answer to everything, what you want, what you want to do. And so as a recruiter in that training is the biggest part is shut up and listen. As, as a recruiter, you have to shut up and listen. If you don't do that, if you start rambling, it feels good because you're talking. So it feels like you're doing a good job. People, if you're a recruiter, you probably enjoy talking if you're doing that for a living. But at the end of the day, we listen to the calls and did you shut up and listen? Did you pick up on two to three things that that driver, that prospective candidate's looking for? From there, we generally get into best practices and we start looking at our most successful recruiter, not just from a sheer volume standpoint, but we also look at turnover by recruiter. So which recruiter has the lowest turnover rate? Over the course of a year, it's not luck. You might say over the course of one week, there could be luck. It's a small sample size. Over the course of 12 months, if you have a recruiter that historically has a 20% lower turnover rate, that's not luck. There's a reason behind it. That recruiter most likely has done a really good job of listening. That recruiter's most likely done a really good job of targeting and working with the drivers that most likely will fit into the roles that they have available. Um, and not wasting the time of the driver that has no chance of one of those roles just because of their background or what they're looking for. From there, we, we really get into the recruiter understanding that the business that they're in. So our recruiters, as an example, they will have a meeting where they're gonna meet with the operational team at least once a quarter, a meeting with the maintenance team, the, a meeting with the HR team. The recruiter should have a comprehensive understanding. They do not need to be an HR you know, expert or operations expert, but that recruiter should have a clear understanding of their place within the organization. And in particular, the driver life cycle, how they're gonna work with each department within the organization. If your recruiter that you're working with internally doesn't have that knowledge, it's hard as a driver to trust what they tell you. And it's not that they're lying to you, it's the fact that they don't know a whole lot. If all they know is on a script, um, and you have any question that goes off that script, that recruiter is not going to be an asset to you. Um, so we're a big believer that that recruiter needs to understand the organization that they're in, understand, hey, if the driver has this issue, who do they talk to? If the driver has that issue, who do they talk to? And then lastly, over the next 12 months, we, we specifically have a, a lady named Lorena. She's based out of Mexico, but she's been with our organization for a long time. She literally is going to handhold with a driver for their first six months. And she works with them that if there's any issues whatsoever, she's going to talk to them. She wants to know, hey, do you have an issue? Tell it. Don't wait. Well, the recruiter gets involved with that because it's a training opportunity. So if, Camille, we hired you two weeks ago and you have a concern that you don't know how to address something on the equipment as an aspect and you tell Lorena that, the recruiter is involved with that because they need to understand it may have been a training opportunity. It may have been that the recruiter wasn't clear about something with the equipment that you wanted to know. So it's going back and revisiting those hires after the fact and understanding what could we have done different. Just because a driver stays does not mean we did a perfect job. It means that we need to follow up and could, could we have made that segue better? Because the ultimate goal is how do I make the experience better for the driver six months from now, 12 months from now, 18 months from now? Just because you stay, if I increase struggles for you in the first 90 days because I didn't recruit you correctly, um, I'm excited that you stayed, but I also cut out the productivity for our truck and for you as the driver in those early stages because I didn't make that segue smooth. 
So there's a lot of ongoing training that, uh, to be honest, never really ends. But over the next 12 months, it gets into that driver life cycle above and beyond. I like that a lot because <clears throat> you're going to always fail as a carrier, as an agency. But learning from them and listening to what everybody is saying, listening to the recruiter, listening to the driver, um, definitely. And it's a lot of similarities in what you said as far as what we do at Rig on Wheels with the recruiters. And then, of course, there's some differences because we are third party. So we're not married to any one um, carrier. But because we are recruiters, there are some similarities. So we definitely do ongoing sales and recruitment training. Definitely. And I know that uh, Pearson and I are both old school because we both say the same thing, uh, but mine might be a little bit more, uh, I don't know how to say this, but uh, I say the art of shut up. Like literally, I have that written in an email. You have to learn the art of shut up because you have to know, listen to your driver. You shouldn't be the one talking all the time. He's not, he or she is not gonna feel comfortable with telling you what's going on if you, feel the need to ramble and talk about your situation. It's listening to your driver, what's going on in their life. Um, um, as far as that, real big on the, the training factor because each uh, tenure, first of all, when they start and depending on what's going on, you'll have um, times or seasons that are going to be easier than others. I'm trying to see how I'm actually trying to say it. When you recruit a driver in November, it's definitely going to be different than when you recruit a driver in April, right? So our training that we do in Rig on Wheels and the support system that we need to do for a driver is different. But also, we really talk to our drivers to ask questions. We rely on social media, the DMs, all of that. But we have trusted drivers that we literally ask questions. So how did this go at this company? How did we do? What could we do better? So even if they stayed at the company, even if we got paid for them with the orientation, but it still could have been something that we could have done differently. We try to know that so it can go smoother the next time. Just like Pearson says, when you hear that whole uh, the recording because of, uh, what does it say, Pearson, because of training purposes, we do the yep. same thing for training purposes. And then at Rig on Wheels, with our recruiters, when they know a call didn't go quite well, they have the power to listen to their own phone calls. They'll stop and listen to their own phone calls to say, was this right or did I do wrong? Or if they're not sure as far as what happened on that phone call, just to follow up, they'll listen again just to review their phone calls, just to make sure that they heard the driver correctly, because we never want to quote a driver incorrectly. So a lot of um, the same similarity. So I just wanted to review or recap on that as well. So I guess we can, what were you about to say? Yeah, and I, I will say a lot of times when we have a driver that says, well, I said this, and we go back and listen to the phone calls, it is not to prove the driver right or wrong. It's not to pr prove the recruiter right or wrong. The, the issue is much larger than that one recruiter and that one driver. It is going through that life cycle and are we missing something? So those recordings are not, a, a, I can't emphasize enough because it's not trying to spike the football on somebody. It's not trying to listen to the phone call and go, ha ha, I'm right, you're wrong, or vice versa. It is what we do today, the training that we do today, and the, the efforts that we make today are what impacts how well we do our job six months from now. Um, so as a, as a driver, I would also say at any company that you have calls recorded on and, and there seems to be a disparity after you're hired on, Request to listen to those calls. Re request that your recruiter listen to those calls because most recruiters are not liars. Most recruiters are not trying to do wrong by the driver. Most recruiters where they get themselves into trouble is because they answered a question that they don't know the answer to.
And I'd much rather as a driver have a recruiter say, I don't know, but I'll get you the answer. That is a sign of a really good recruiter. If you're a driver and you have a recruiter that's willing to say, I don't know, you should get encouraged by that. Now, they got to follow through and get you the answer. So it's not just the I don't know part of it. But anytime I have somebody that's a recruiter that says, I don't know, but I will find out for you, as a driver, you were dealing with a recruiter that you probably want to be on the phone with. Thanks for that follow-up, Pearson, because I agree with all of that. It's, it's not for the one-offs. It's definitely for the overall. That's what the recordings are for, is for the overall, because it's it's 100% to make the entire process work better. That's what we are looking for. So let's go ahead and go um, to our commercial and then we're gonna come back um, and talk about hot jobs. Josue is letting us know right now that he has updated all this thing. Um, so let's go ahead and um, go over the hot jobs and the hot areas. Uh, my name is Stacy Morton and my position is OTR driver and I've been with the company for eight months. I enjoy um, being with part of the family because good miles, uh, nice people, uh, they listen to the drivers. The pay is excellent at, here at MVT. The home time is very good. You get to go home anytime you want. The dispatchers are really nice. They listen to the drivers, whatever you want. They, they will do their best to give you what you need and the equipment is good and safety is is excellent yeah the they're they're fast and um the roadside is good they they listen to you and they get the job fixed in a timely manner yeah i would recommend um other drivers to come to mvt because this is a, a good place to work and you get excellent uh, home time and everything that you need here. Welcome back, welcome back. Okay, so let me tell you what host Sway said. I wanna know is if he, what he said gonna be different than what you said. Now, it could be because you might have some more to add, but he said he needs about three for Division 329, uh, residing in Laredo, San Antonio, DFW, and Houston for the week of 1120 and 1127. And he'll take a team for 329 residing in those areas. Correct. That's where I was going to go. So we have some limited opportunities there. 329 is a, a, a division that gets a lot of attention. It's mainly Texas and Oklahoma, regional southern Oklahoma. A lot of drop and hook, a lot of staying close into that area, weekly home time. Uh, the big thing on that is to make sure that you're, um, bear with me here as I'm competing against a vacuum at this moment in the hotel that we're doing this. Um, the big thing there is you're running, it's a shorter length of haul, but it's a lot of drop and hook. So if you live out of Houston, if you live out of um, those areas, Laredo, San Antonio, DFW, uh, need three 329 drivers the week of 1127. And I would take a team out of those markets the week of 1120 or the week of 1127. Uh, and I know as we go into the week of 1120, a lot of people will ask the question, will I get home for Thanksgiving? And if I'm not home for Thanksgiving, am I going to stay busy? That's the beauty of the drop and hook part of it. So, yeah, we stay busy on Thanksgiving. We do have drivers that are home on Thanksgiving, but for people in orientation next week, when you come to our orientation, the expectation is you're leaving orientation with a load. Um, and we have a lot of drop and hook. We utilize local drivers in specific markets. And so, yeah, we'll keep you busy. Okay, perfect. We don't really hear the vacuum, but I know it's, it's hard to concentrate for you. That's how I am. That's why uh, I keep, um, if I'm talking or whatever, I keep a two-headed thing going, but yes, I, I get it. So um, if they will know before they go to orientation, if they're the driver that is home for orientation or, I mean, home for Thanksgiving or not, right? Okay. Yeah, so what... If you're coming next week's orientation, the expectation is you probably are not home for Thanksgiving. That's why you're coming to orientation. 
We don't do orientation then have you start two weeks later. If you're in orientation, the expectation should be that you're leaving orientation to start working in some form or fashion. Um, the orientation, you know, we aren't big believers in having someone travel in for orientation, then travel home and sit. So if you're ready to work, that's where the orientation process begins on that. Okay, perfect. And let me say this, if you get recruited by Rig on Wheels and you're in MVT's orientation, we will um, make sure that you have Thanksgiving dinner. So just clear across the board, we do that every year for any of our drivers that do orientation and can't get home um, for Thanksgiving, even though typically the companies do it too, so you get two Thanksgiving dinners. So that's I've never passed up Thanksgiving dinner one, two, or three times. Well, 12 times. Yeah, but that's and, and so our orientation next week in El Paso is also our driver appreciation for the quarter. Uh, so when you get done with the orientation in El Paso, which is where we're doing orientation next week, um, we're doing our driver appreciation, which has a nice Thanksgiving buffet already included in that, and it is loaded. Turkey, stuffing, ham, you name it, it's it's quite the event here. So if you're coming to our orientation next week, um, you, you will be well taken care of. Royal Jones will be there, myself. Uh, I'll be there along with all the leadership team. Um, so from a over-the-top orientation standpoint, next week's orientation in El Paso, uh, you will have a full presence, a full dinner waiting for you, and you also get to see a car giveaway. Uh, I am not going to release who won that car, but I'm excited to talk about that in next week's podcast. We can talk about who won that car. Yeah, I'm excited about that, about who won that car. I'm always excited about the car thing. Um, I will say this, it is uh, it is somebody that's been with us less than nine months. What? I wasn't ready for that. Yeah, wow. it, is a, it is a much newer driver. They've been with us less than nine months. That's crazy. They came in with a plan. Yep, right off the bat. Yeah, they came in with a plan. That, that was a person with a plan. Man with a plan. Um, but yeah, so definitely, uh, you will have two Thanksgiving dinners. So if you are a MVT driver that is recruited from Rig on Wheels, you will get the nice cushy Thanksgiving dinner, um, from MVT, but then also you'll get a gift card from Rig on Wheels so you can be able to have a Thanksgiving dinner on the Rig on Wheels show. So let's go ahead, go to um, the nice gentleman that talks about the car giveaway so we can come back and Pearson talk about the giveaway and everything. And I know it's going to be somebody next week that is nine, less than nine months. That's crazy. But he's not going to tell us who until next week, but. <laughs> but at least, uh, yeah. So let's talk. Let's go to commercial about the car giveaway, Kayla. My name is Carlos Vasquez. Tengo trabajando tres años aproximadamente y somos B1 y andamos en territorio Estados Unidos. Lo que me gusta de MVT es que tiene buenos viajes, buenos camiones y, y muy buenas millas está. Mi comunicación con, con los despachos es muy buena y todo eso, y siempre están a la orden del día. ¿Qué pienso del, del equipo de los camiones? Pues que están muy bien y les dan sus mantenimientos, sus PO y todo lo demás, alineación y balanceo, todo cambio de llantas y excelente, excelente servicio. La compañía cada trimestre este, regala un auto para los operadores. Me motiva pues, a, a crecer más como persona y pues, para dar el, el 100, como dicen, para la compañía. Welcome back, y'all. Okay, so Pearson, where's the car giveaway? It's going to be in El Paso. That, yeah, that's where we're doing orientation. Normally, that's a giveaway, but that's where we're doing orientation next week. Um, but yeah, can't can't spill the beans on who won it, but I can tell you that they've been with the company less than nine months, and that's really a testament to the fact that the car giveaway is based off driver behavioral patterns more than any other factor. And so what we do every quarter, we have a driver appreciation day. We do it at all our locations, Denver, Nashville, Laredo, El Paso. 
Um, and it's a chance for us to show appreciation. I, I we want to do that year round. And I know that in September, the industry does their weekly thing and it's cool and we recognize it, but we try to do it every quarter and it gives us a chance to do the car giveaway because the car giveaway goes to the driver that has the best fuel economy in the fleet. We average about 9.5 miles a gallon in an industry that traditionally averages about 6.5 miles a gallon. There's many, many, many factors that go into that. There's equipment, there's um, uh, fleet maintenance and a whole uh, list of other factors. But the biggest factor is driver behavioral patterns. It's uh, pre-planning. It's understanding how to get the most out of your day and your hours available. It's uh, acceler accelerating slowly, decelerating slowly, stopping the times that you get on and off the road that doesn't have to deal when you're at the origin and destination point. So with that said, every quarter we give a brand new car to the driver or drivers that have the best fuel economy. Um, last, last quarter, we gave it away to an individual that averaged 12.6 miles a gallon. And I can tell you, it's not the division. It's come from multiple different divisions. There are some divisions that you look at on a map and go, oh, well, this one has an easier time doing it. It comes from multiple divisions. There's not one set division that wins all these things. Um, and I can tell you the last person that won, it's been with us 20 years. The person that will win at this time has been with us nine months. And so it is one of those things that it comes down to your ability to manage your day, manage your time and get the most out of your equipment. And that means not being a lead foot. That means pre-planning. And that means being really attentive to detail on how you drive. It's the difference between being a steering wheel holder and being a professional truck driver. Uh, those two things are not the same thing in any way, shape or form. And so I'm excited about it. And then yearly, whoever gets the most yearly, best fuel economy uh, economy on a yearly basis uh, is going to win $25,000. I can tell you that's just as competitive. We have one individual in the company that's won that four years over the course of his 20 years with the company. Um, so he's racked up $100,000 extra pay over his time with MVT just because of that fact. And a couple of those four years, he never won one of the quarterly ones, but just he was consistent about over the course of the year to end up getting that $25,000. So it's the $25,000 annually. It's the car giveaway every single quarter. Royal Jones likes doing that. We have the camera crew and Royal comes out and he gives uh, hands the keys over to a new car. Um, this particular one is a 2023 black Nissan Sonata. It's sitting in our lobby at this very moment. I know I was sitting in the driver's seat last week. It is quite plush. That's excellent. Excellent. So he, the, the driver, I ain't gonna say uh, he or she, because we don't know. He, she, they, them. We don't know yet who the person was. But um, they came in with a plan. So let's talk about some of the things. I know not having a lead foot, but being coached by whom, some of the things that led yeah. to that. Yeah, so uh, in this particular case here, we, we have a, a number of partners. Uh, these individuals had really good training right from the outset. Um, in fact, their driver trainers definitely played a role in that. That gets into the career development part of this. Um, we have approximately 100 driver trainers, and they deal with newer drivers in the industry. We don't take on a lot of students. We primarily do out of El Paso, along with a couple other areas. We'll have more on that coming down the road, actually. But one of the career advancement opportunities within our organization is being a driver trainer, being the person that sets up the next generation for success. And driver trainers make anywhere between 100 to $140,000 a year. In the particular example, this one, I'd probably point to that driver trainer playing a major role in, in getting somebody established and set up to be successful from a fuel economy standpoint. Uh, we have a department called driver services that their sole function is to work with a driver on bettering what we do out on the road. And driver services is not a department that's solely there to deal with a driver when they're in trouble or they've done something wrong. It can be as much as a driver reaching out and going, hey, I'm averaging about 8.5 miles a gallon right now. I want to see if I can get that into 9, 9.5. Can you help me? And we look at the information, the, the truck, the information coming off the computer off the truck is extremely detailed and shows where there's some efficiencies to be gained. Part of it gets into, okay, let's talk with your fleet manager and work on a game plan. Is it the time of day that you're running that may be a problem? Is it a specific lane or specific customer where you may have it having to idle or is there a mechanical issue that we're dealing with? Maybe your APU is a problem. Maybe there is... Um, 
uh, an issue with the truck. Generally, that's not the case, but we look at all those different scenarios to ultimately get you where you want to go in your career and the efficiencies that you want to gain with that fuel economy and safety standpoint. So driver services are the department that's solely their focus to make you better in one way, shape or form. Um, they do a really nice job. And one of the things that I like about the department is at some companies, the driver services or driver liaison or something like that's purely there just so you don't quit your job. That's not what they're there for. Their job is literally career development, driver development, working with you on your long-term success. So five years from now, if you're gonna be the driver on the same fleet, or you're gonna be a driver manager in the operations, if you're gonna be in safety, if you're gonna be in orientation, or if you're gonna be a trainer, they work with you on that career development path. Uh, short term, it shows gains from a fuel economy standpoint, but long term, it also that department's there to help you in your long term growth with the organization. That's good. I think that I, I know I say that every week, but I think that that is truly the best part. And I mean, the testament is the person next week that's going to win that's that hasn't even nine months. I mean, that's huge right there. Can't get any better than that. So that's yep. awesome. And can't wait to see their testimony um, when it comes to about the car, to be honest yep. with you. Yeah, because I want to use that as a commercial. That'll be tremendous right there. Um, so let's go to commercial and then come back and we're going to do a few questions um, before we get to talk about the truck. Before we, thanks everybody for coming back. Before we jump into the questions, I want to make sure everybody, um, I say this again. So if next week for Thanksgiving, if you are in orientation, actually for any of the companies that we recruit for, but I wanted to talk about it when it comes to MVT. If you are in orientation, um, for a company that we recruit for, especially for MVT, we, as in the Regal Wheel Show, will sponsor your Thanksgiving dinner with a gift card. Nice. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Kayla, what were you about to say? Uh, so, uh, yeah, next week's podcast, um, and I didn't talk to you about this in advance, but we should be all on the same page, I believe. We're, we are in the studio next week, and I believe I have Josue with us next week. So I'm excited yeah. about that too. So we'll bring Josue back. So I will say as we get into questions and answers, if you have any questions for ultimately the recruiter internally with MVT that you'd be working for, include those questions, send those questions in, because we will have Josue back next week and he loves to get into the weeds. Um, mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I'm looking forward to being in the studio next week with uh, Kayla and Bryce and the team there. They do a good job for us. And, and so we will have host sway with us. So uh, if you have questions that you really want to get into the weeds, uh, send those in because we'll have host sway and we like to have host sway squirm. <laughs> he's so nice. Oh, he, it's, it's easy. I can say whatever I want when he's not on, but next week I'll be <laughs> nice as can be. <laughs> Okay. Right. Hey guys. Yeah. So I had a question come in kind of what you were talking about Pearson with like how involved the team at MVT is with getting drivers to the success that they're shooting for. How involved is the safety team or driver managers in helping drivers plan their routes, like knowing weather conditions, uh, road conditions, things like that. 
We, in a lot of ways, we have to be more so than a normal trucking company because we do a lot of engineered lanes, point A to point B to point C to point D, back to A sort of thing. Is It can get somewhat complicated from a standpoint. So as an example, it's why we talk about how if you're late on one load, it really impacts three other loads. It's great from a driver's perspective because it makes the pay very consistent with each division because you have all that pre-planned out. But from a driver manager perspective, it means with a driver that you have to communicate, you have to over communicate because everything kind of impacts everything else. So that relationship between the driver manager or fleet manager and the driver has to be very close from a communication standpoint. Now, we'll communicate with drivers differently from one driver to the next because Quite frankly, every driver is somewhat unique and different, but that relationship has to be very close given the nature of what it is that we do. That driver manager is always available, and if they aren't available, what we have that's kind of unique compared to many other trucking companies is a lot of trucking companies have nighttime and over or weekend dispatchers that it's their kind of the training ground. You're left with the folks that aren't necessarily the most efficient at their job. If you're on the 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 driver manager board at nights and weekends, you're one of the more senior drivers. Uh, so if you are having something that's outside of normal business hours, it's a bit unusual or extreme, you're generally dealing with a more experienced fleet manager that's able to think independently and get you a solution to your problem. But we, we are highly involved with them. We have to be just because of the nature of what we do. I like that, especially with the engineered lanes. I've always um, liked MVT because of the engineered lanes, and every company is like like that. But yeah, those engineered lanes. Any other um, questions? Well, I know you had quite a few, Kayla. So yes, um, that's why I want question. to kind of leave it to its own segment. <laughs> my next question is: How often are the trucks serviced, uh, or preventative maintenance is completed? Yeah, so with the truck now, it's it's not like a car where, you know, they tell you to change your oil every 3,000 miles, though technically you can do it every 5,000, but, you know, I, I'm not going to get into big oil and, and make random conspiracy theory about the folks at Penn's Oil. Uh, the, dr the truck dictates that, and that's the beauty of these trucks is you have a lot of computer systems that are highly sophisticated. So when you get a brand new truck, that first preventative maintenance may not be needed needed until 50,000 miles. And as a truck gets older, that time frame of how often that PM takes place gets shorter, shorter, and shorter. The nice thing about our network with Penske, and Penske is who we work with on those trucks, though, is we have an extensive network of locations we can go to so it's done quickly and efficiently. Uh, so we go off the computer, but when that computer says that the PM is needed, we have access to have it done immediately, um, be it at one of our main locations or at one of the Penske's hundreds upon hundreds of locations around the country, um, all fitting within our network. And so we stay on top of that very tightly, but we let we let the computer dictate that because the computer tends to be uh, able to take the human element out of it. Um, but we stay on top of that. So once the computer identifies, hey, you need to change the oil or there's this issue, that issue, um, we can get it addressed very quickly within hours of that message coming up just because of the nature of how our engineered lanes also match up to the Penske network of truck uh, service locations. And Pearson, can I um, add in there, can you talk about how if there, or not if, but when, because trucks break down, all the time. Can you talk about how Penske is Johnny on the spot with the maintenance uh, when the truck breaks down on the road or whatever and why they are so Johnny on the spot? Yeah, uh, and it gets into what we'd call as a sub. And so as an example, let's say you're on a run from El Paso to Dallas and then Dallas to Denver. And you get to Dallas and all of a sudden your uh, APU unit's not working and you're having air conditioning issues. Well, you find that out and you're about 20 minutes outside of Dallas, the next location you're going to hit is probably Amarillo. And so the nice thing there is you can get to Amarillo. They can fix it quickly. If they can't fix it quickly and it's going to be more of a long-term issue, we can then get you into a sub truck, same spec and model, that's going to get you onto Denver, then El Paso. And when you get back through on that engineered lane in that particular example, what, your truck is waiting for you and can, you can get back into your original truck if that's the truck that you desire. That flexibility is really important because your time is money. You do not have time to sit there and wait. 
Um, we, in a scenario where we have to pay layover or detention time, we absolutely will do it. But the goal here should be to keep you rolling. That's where the money is, both for you and as us as a company. So that flexibility of our engineered lanes uh, aligning with Penske makes a big difference. Now, let's say you have an issue and you're stuck on the road and you can't make it to one of those service centers. Then it's up to Penske to get to you, and they have contractual obligations of getting to you and getting you a sub so that you're not spending hours upon hours just killing time. Uh, it is probably our biggest competitive advantage. Like I said, I've never made the claim that we are the highest paying job in trucking. I'm sure that you can do some complicated, really high end job, but we are the most consistent. And part of that comes into the relationship with Penske and Penske being able to get to you quickly and keep you running. I can make the claim that we're one of the most consistent paying carriers in the industry because of that fact. And Penske is a big part of that equation. Yeah, I really like that partnership, definitely. Um, the maintenance and making sure you keep running and you're not just sitting on the road, that's for sure. You don't see MVT's trucks just sitting and you do yep. see a lot of drivers just sitting. That is 100% the truth. Um, yep. Kayla, what about another one? I do have you one another one question. up your sleeve. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, what is your main fuel stop and do you have designated like rest areas and rural areas that are safe for your drivers to, or they know like I can go here and be safe or this is a good stop in a rural Park. area? Yeah. Uh, the the um, truck stop that we have the closest relationship and the best fuel savings with is Love's. Um, we also use our own biodiesel that you can get it in uh, several locations, Laredo, uh, Denver, uh, El Paso. Uh, all of our engineered lanes run through one of our main terminals, though, so that also offers driver services such as showers and, and a number of other facilities, laundry. Um, our, our engineered lanes put us in areas of the country that we're going to have access to this stuff and you should not be in a position where you're going to have to park in some place that's dangerous. I will tell anybody if you're a driver, you do not want to park on the side of the road. You do not want to park on an off-ramp, an on-ramp. Uh, numerous safety concerns that come when you do that where you can be dead asleep in, uh, in your truck and get hit by somebody just because you're wrong place, wrong time. Um, so all of our engineered lanes are in areas that that should be a rarity. Now, you could have a maintenance issue that forces that to take place where you just can't go forward. Um, but with that said, all of our engineered lanes, part of the engineered lanes have been designed to service the customer, keep in a certain running lane. But from a driver safety perspective, our engineered lanes have the added benefit of you are going to be near a facility or some kind of MVT presence at most times, excluding when something goes really haywire. And even then, you're not going to be in that position very long because of the relationship with Penske. Awesome. Awesome. And so to piggyback on the fact that um, MBT has some terrific equipment, uh, the partnership with Penske. I want to go ahead and go to commercial um, where the tall human is in the condo explaining all the ins and outs of um, MBT's truck. Um, and then we'll close up shop for the day. At Mesilla Valley Transportation, every driver is behind the wheel of a late model international LT. A truck that takes comfort, convenience, and safety to a whole new level. Join us as we explore the impressive features of this powerhouse on wheels. The open road is full of surprises, and sometimes that includes unexpected encounters with wildlife. But worry not, the International LT has you covered. The front end protection guard offers an extra layer of defense, protecting you from animal strikes. Drive with confidence, knowing that you're shielded from the unexpected. We all know how important it is to keep our batteries charged. And our international LTs have your back. The Cummins X15 is equipped with an auto start feature, ensuring that your batteries are automatically recharged when they run low on volts. It's a seamless process that keeps you powered up and ready to hit the road. Disc brakes and an engine brake provide reliable and safe stopping power when you need it most. You can have peace of mind knowing that you're in control. Safety is at the forefront of what we do. Our international LTs are equipped with top of the line safety features to ensure your well being while out on the road. These tractors are equipped with Bendix fusion protection, collision mitigation, and lane departure warning. Achieving good fuel efficiency deserves recognition. 
With the International LT, your efforts don't go unnoticed. When you consistently achieve impressive miles per gallon, the International LT rewards you with increased speed. It's a little extra motivation to keep you pushing for better fuel economy. After a long drive, you're ready for a well-deserved break. With the International LT, you can enjoy your rest period in absolute comfort. Thanks to its auxiliary power unit, you can keep the driver's cabin heated or cooled just the way you like it. No matter the weather outside, you'll always find your sweet spot within our International LT. The International LT understands that comfort extends beyond driving. It's a space where you can truly feel at home. I'm a big guy and I have room to move around in here. With plenty of room to spare, the International LT accommodates even the tallest drivers. And there's ample storage for all your clothes, cooking essentials, and tools, making life on the road even more convenient. Speaking of cooking, bring along your appliances and don't sacrifice any luxuries thanks to all of our International LTs being equipped with built-in inverters. Dry your hair, make a smoothie, or play a game, all from the comfort of your truck. We take pride in our well-maintained fleet. And if by chance you do come across something wrong on your truck, you're never far from help, thanks to our valuable relationship with Penske. With more than 750 brick and mortar Penske shops nationwide, their expert team is always ready to assist you. From routine maintenance to unexpected repairs, they'll get you taken care of and back on the road in no time. And there you have it. Just a few things about this late model International LT that make MVT the place to be. Welcome back everybody, welcome back. Well, we are definitely um, going to go ahead and close out for the day. And of course, um, like always, if you are looking for another job, another opportunity, questions or what have you, first go ahead and give us a call at 281-968-3100, 281-968-3100. Uh, go to our website as well. You can fill out an Intella application on there at rigonwheels.com. Also, you'll be able to contact us with any questions. You can text that number. You can go to recruiters uh, or recruiting at rigonwheels.com and text the questions because, like Pearson said, Josue will be in the studio the main studio in mansfield next week and so you'll be able to ask questions directly to him what are you about to say pearson no excited to be on again this week looking forward to next week uh by all means with host sway in there if you got any comments questions or concerns let's load up and uh have an engaging uh podcast next week Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, so we see you guys next week on Tuesday at 3 p.m. Central Standard Time. Have a wonderful week, guys. Bye-bye.